Hi everyone, this is Sahil from QuickNode and uh, today we are joined with Pauline from the Wormhole DevRel team. I'll pass it on to you, Pauline, if you want to introduce yourself to everyone. Hi everyone, so my name is Pauline, I'm the DevRel at Wormhole and uh, yeah, the goal of today is basically to explain to you how Wormhole works on a um, high level but also how can you implement it into your code. Now Pauline will explain us that how Wormhole actually works with the help of uh, some visuals. As many developers are there, you might have faced the problem of creating application that can operate across multiple blockchains. Interoperability remains a significant challenge and it's very important to understand what kind of solution you have out there. The goal of this video is to explain to you what WOML is, what it is not, how does it operate at a high level and why you should consider it. Just so you know, this is the beginning. We'll follow up with a series of videos that showcase each one whole product um, and how you implement it in the code, because at the end of the day, that's what we're interested in. Imagine a universe where each galaxy represents a blockchain ecosystem. So the far part, the communicating between them can be challenging. They all have their own standards and mechanism. And this is basically the kind of issue Wormhole is addressing. So we want to address the problem of uh, blockchain isolation, liquidity fragmentation, and our end goal is really to abstract all the cross-chain complexity for you to be able to focus on building your app. So it's very important you think of Wormhole as a not a single solution, but more as a modular toolkit, right? So you can have different tools that you stack on top of each other based on your needs. I think that at the end, it's never about the tech, right? It's really about what you guys want to build. So what can you do with Wormhole? Wormhole is a generic message passing protocol. And I think it's very important. Uh, you need to understand the, 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 the core messaging primitive there because then you will realize how everything is designed around it. So you can send cross-chain message of any arbitrary data between blockchain. You can also do asset transfer. So it facilitates the movement of token, including NFT, uh, across supported chain. Also, we have a whole bunch of tooling. Um, I strongly recommend you to check out the, the new version of the WAML scan because it's uh, it will make your cross-chain development a hundred times better, I promise. It's important to clarify what WAML is not. So, WAML is not a blockchain. It's a communication layer that connects different blockchain, but it is not a blockchain in itself. Also, it is not just a token bridge. So yes, we facilitate transfer, but it offers much more than a conventional token bridge. And that is important to remember it. So how does it work? WAML is smart contract based, which means that it treats each blockchain as arbitrary computing platform where you can do message passing between smart contracts. I think that's the easiest to think of it. So here is a quick overview of a message lifecycle. I think we can break it down into on-chain and off-chain components. Everything starts with a core contract. This is your entry point. So your contract will call the emitter contract that calls the wormhole call contract. And they usually use two main methods, publish message or verify message. Let's say you take the publish method this will trigger an event and adds the message to a transaction log. So here we enter the realm of off-chain action. So from the transaction log get picked up by the Guardian. So the Guardian network, um, the Guardians, there are actually 19 of them. What they do basically, they monitor, they monitor the core layer. So they validate the message by signing what we call a verifiable uh, action approval. So VAA is the, sh the shortcut. And this is a signed attestation of an observed message. Now, this VIA, it gets picked up by the relayer. So in a relay is basically any off-chain process that relays a VIA to a target chain. Wormhole has two sorts of relayer. So the most common, uh, the one that we recommend to use because it's easier, uh, is the Wormhole relayer. Uh, it's a decentralized relayer that uses the Wormhole relay contract. But you can also have a custom relayer. This is really based on your need, but you'll be in charge of setting this up. It's important here that we mention also the spy. Um, so the spy, they don't do any validation work. They just observe uh, so that they don't interfere directly with the message. That's what I mean. 
And then you have an API, which is basically a REST endpoint uh, that will retrieve any data uh, for VIA or Guardian Network. So it's very important if you want to know at any moment any sorts of information. Then the final step. The relayer sends the message to the target chain contract. So it's very important here as a concept to understand that a transaction is considered final when it has reached a certain level of finality on the blockchain network it was initiated on. So this level of finality, we call that consistency level in the wormhole protocol. And please note that different blockchain networks use different consensus mechanism, right? So they all have a uh, different finality assumption. Uh, so when you, you would expect uh, finality to happen on Ethereum or Solana, this is a different time, of course. Well, now that you have a solid overview of wormhole, let's start coding. I'll show you how to send your first cross-check message with Wormhole. What we will do is we will be using this demo Wormhole messaging sample app, which has been created by Wormhole DevRel team. And I already have this app sample app uh, set up locally on my computer. But if you want to use this app or play with this app, this will be linked in the description below. So it's very simple and it's a standard foundry app so you will basically have to git clone this repo and then you'll have to do npm install forge install and put all your environment variables in place and then you'll be good to go so i already have this app set up on my local computer and it will look something like this so the app is a standard foundry app which has your scripts which has your source files which are basically your contracts, a test file, a environment variable to store your private key. But again, this is a disclaimer that whenever you are using applications or Foundry, hard hat, whatever frameworks in production, make sure that you do not have your private key in environment variables, but you just use your private key for that particular session. And you can create a particular session or a unique session in your command line tool. All right, so getting back to our app, we also have a chains config file where we have all of our information around what will be the sender chain, what will be the receiver chain. We also have our RPC URLs over here, which you can get from your quick note dashboard. So what we will be doing is we will be sending a message from Avalanche Fuji testnet to Ethereum Sepolia testnet. So we will need endpoints for both. We will need uh, Avalanche Fuji testnet endpoint to first deploy the contract and then second to execute the send message function, which will actually send the message from the Fuji testnet to Sepolia testnet. So this is how your Avalanche Fuji testnet endpoint will look like. And then if you copy the Sepolia testnet endpoint and replace this with your endpoint, this file will be good to go. But this file has a lot of other things as well, like chain IDs and few of the wormhole smart contracts. But a unique thing with chain IDs over here is that these chain IDs are not your normal day-to-day -day chain IDs, which you use for different networks over your EVM ecosystem. So I let Pauline explain that how these chain IDs are different and why do we need different chain IDs for the wormhole ecosystem? So over to you, Pauline. Yeah, so it's quite important to understand that the chain ID we have in this file is actually not a EVM uh, correspondent chain ID. The reason is that wormhole is actually, well, we interoperability solution, right? So we go over to many different ecosystems. So we, we're not EVM centric per se. So uh, they all have their own uh, wormhole chain ID. So to find them, you can go on the website exactly where um, Sahil is, uh, is pointing now. So you have mainnet, testnet, you can find every single uh, chain ID, right? So. Um, if you go on mainnet, you can see here Sepolia, for instance, that's the correct one. So it's a common mistake that people just use uh, the, the most commonly known uh, EVM chain ID, especially when they use Sepolia. Uh, but please make sure that you have that uh, well set up. Yeah. And I think Perfect. in that file, there's also a few other um, things maybe. So the RPC like that we have covered. 
uh, there's the token read, the wormhole read layer, and uh, this is also you can find all of this. So each uh, contract, wormhole uh, contract per chain has a contract address. You can find them here. So you have mainnet, testnet, even the one they are uh, devnet at the moment. So um, you can find all this information and you just copy paste them into your, um, your app. Uh, you can see the core contract and the token bridge are like separated, but uh, whatever you find, you can find it on the, on the documentation. And the oh. wormhole relayer, also it's something we discussed in the previous uh, thing, but as you, as if you remember in the explanation, everything needs to interact with uh, uh, the core contract uh, to start with. And then everything would interact with a wormhole relayer because this is where the VAA gets emitted and then it gets sent via the relay, it gets sent to the, uh, con the destination chain. So also you will have to make sure that you uh, have this address. Got it. Perfect. So basically the wormhole core contract uh, will in a way send message to relayer, but at, at the same time, we'll also send message to guardians and guardians will send the verification to relayer and relayer will deliver the message to the destination chain. Like That's on a very, very, part. very high level. Yes, target chain sent to a core contract that sends to the garden that emit the VAA, I mean, that signed VAA, and then the relay picked up and send it to um, yeah destination chain. That's how it works. Got it. And uh, okay, so this is how the change.json file will look like. And if you want to configure other chains, you will just have to replace the chain ID looking at the wormhole documentation over here you will have to select a, a proper wormhole chain ID. Again, not the network ID. You'll have to get the wormhole chain ID. And then you can also find each of the smart contract for that particular chain from the documentation as well. So going back to our code, for in this environment video, we'll replace this with your actual private key. And then in the source, directory we have two smart contracts we have message sender dot sol and we have message receiver dot sol so message sender dot sol will be deployed on avalanche fuji testnet what we are doing over here is we are importing the wormhole relayer interface smart contract over here which is imported from the wormhole solidity sdk which is already installed as a foundry module so pauline would you like to explain that why do we need this wormhole solidity SDK, or why do we need the wormhole relayer interface? Yeah, so um, a bit to like to get back on what we said before. So the SDK basically is the the easiest way because it would abstract all the complexity for you, right? Like any other SDK, if you want to, what it allows you to do is that it allows you to interact through smart contract with any protocol that we we basically integrate. So that is. Your, your starting point is a good thing for the for the SDK, and um, and then you need to use the interface, the wormhole relayer, because everything has to go through it. Like you cannot go from one chain to another without having this uh, this uh, wormhole relayer. Um, so it's uh, very important. Yeah, you add it here in the. I mean, it's already added. You will have it in the SDK, but just for for the, the explanation that that's what it does. So basically here you can see in the contract, so it's always from a source chain. So um, a message sender, the person that sends that into a destination. So in the receiver, okay. So the, the setup is pretty simple. You have the address of the wormhole relayer that you passed uh, uh, initially. We spoke about it before. Uh, and then the function just below basically will just give you an estimation of how much it will cost. Uh, and Got it. So this code cross chain cost will estimate that how much it will cost to send the message from one chain to another, exactly. right? And then we are uh, initializing the wormhole relayer yes. uh, in the in the constructor. So it will be initialized when we deploy the smart contract. And then this is the actual function, right? Using which yes. we send the message, and it takes the target chain address uh, and target address as like parameters and you also have the message as the parameter and uh, that message will be sent in the payload right so yes this, that's it, it will be sent using send payload to evm so what's this about 
Yeah, so like uh, in the payload, basically, this is why we say it's very, uh, you can send any sorts of data uh, with wormhole, like as long as you can put it in the payload. So uh, this is where you will get. So here it's a string, but anything you can put inside a payload will go. So anything like uh, your ERC20 tokens to transfer those from one chain to another? So you can do that. I mean, you do that differently. We have we have actually a very easy option for doing this. Like one is called NTT, so native token transfer. Uh, okay. But if you want to, yes, you can send any sorts of uh, data assets like your NFT, anything you want. Got it. Perfect. So it's very straightforward and simple. And uh, thank you so much for explaining it uh, in a simpler way. And then let's go to message receiver dot sol smart contract over here. We are again importing the relayer dot sol contract, and then we are also importing the wormhole receiver interface contract. So then we are initializing the relayer smart contract, and uh, then we are doing the mapping to store the register senders for each chain. So then in the constructor, we are saying that. Registration owner will be the person or will be the address who is deploying the smart contract. And uh, this is the modifier is registered sender. Do you want to say something about this? Like what does this do, Pauline? Yeah. So uh, it check if the sender is registered on the source chain, and it's imp like it's very important because we you don't want any random contract that is not verified to be able to send through things. So that that is basically what it, it does here. So make sure that. If you're not registered, like it would not go through. Got it. So this will check that if it's coming from a registered sender or not, and then this will set the yeah. registered sender. Got right. it. Perfect. The check. Mm -hmm. And this is the actual function which will mm -hmm. get the message from the sender chain, right? Exactly. So like in the other file, you get the sending uh, send one more message. And in this mm -hmm. one, you have received one more message. So it's it's a very simple both way. Good. So these were the contracts. And then we have the scripts to deploy each of the contract. Like uh, we have this deploy receiver.js to deploy message receiver.sol. We have deploy sender.js to deploy message sender.sol. So these are standard deployment script of Foundry, but this is something unique or this is something different. So over here, what we are basically doing is we are passing the information, whatever we have in the chains.json file, we are getting that information. And then once the contracts are deployed, the contracts information will be saved in this file, which is deployed contracts.json. So we are getting all of that information from deployed contracts.json. And then we are saving that in deployed contracts variable. Then we have some log statements and then we are getting the avalanche qg testnet configuration from our change variable and then we are setting the provider which is basically our quick note testnet endpoint which will be used to send the message and then we are initializing the wallet which will be initialized using the private key and then we are getting the abi and loading that abi so that we can initialize the message sender.sol contract in this script, which we are doing over here. So we basically need a provider, a wallet, and the contract address to initialize a contract in an ether script. So this is basically an ether script. And then we are setting the target chain, which is our destination chain, which is Sepolia in this case. So if you see that this is wormhole chain ID, not the actual chain ID of Sepolia and then the target address. So target address will basically be the address of the deployed contract on the Sepolia testnet. And then we have the actual message over here. Pauline, what do you think the message should be? Okay, we should say something like, uh, hi from uh, Pauline and Sahil. That's very, very original. <laughs> All right. So this will be the actual message which will be sent from one chain to another. This will be the transaction cost, which will be fetched using quote cross chain cost function, which we saw over here in yes. the message sender dot salt smart contract. And if we go back to our file and this 
is the actual transaction, whatever we are sending from one chain to another. So we will send the transaction by getting the gas estimation from uh, code cross chain cost function, which comes from message sender dot solve smart contract and make sure that you have enough tokens on the source chain, which is the Avalanche Fuji chain in this context. And uh, then we are logging the messages over here. And this is how our script looks like. So now let's actually deploy the smart contracts. What you'll have to do is you will have to npm run deploy sender. So we are just deploying the sender smart contract on Avalanche Fuji testnet right now. And uh, our sender smart contract, which is message sender.sol smart contract is deployed on Avalanche Fuji testnet. And we'll do the same for the receiver smart contract. So we will do npm run deploy receiver. All right, so now that you can see that our receiver contract is also deployed, but you must also see a message that registered message sender, which was our Avalanche Fuji testnet smart contract or the sender smart contract. So in the deployed receiver contract, what we are also doing is that we are getting the deployed smart contracts from deployed contracts.json file. So this is how basically the deployed contracts.json file will look like once your contracts are deployed. But once only the Avalanche Fuji testnet smart contract is deployed, it will only have this much information. And what we are doing in deployed receiver.js file is we are getting the address of that particular contract and saving it in Avalanche sender address. And then we are running set registered sender function so that we can register that as the sender address. So yeah. that is what we are basically doing over here. And now that our sender address is registered, we should be able to send the message from the sender smart contract to the receiver smart contract. You basically restrict the message uh, to only accept registered uh sender and this is like security measure right so basically no other smart contract can just send the message to this receiver contract it has to be a registered smart contract yes exactly so it has to go through the step of getting registered and then it will it would just do it got it this is a nice feature nice security feature and now let's actually send the message so we'll, we will run the command npm run send message it will print the sender and receiver addresses, then it will send the transaction and wait for confirmation. Uh, but now you can see that transaction has already been sent. So let's open this link, which is of wormhole scan. Yeah. So over there, we should be able to see more details about our transaction. Right, so here you can see that the VAA is emitted. So basically the two steps, two steps are confirmed. Uh, so now what you're waiting is you're, you're waiting for the final step, which, uh, if you go down a little bit, uh, so here's the VA ID. So, um, basically what you're waiting now is for finality. So because we are, uh, sending to now it's completed. Um, but if you, you have to remember, as I said, each protocol has its own mechanism, okay? So you might wait for finality on certain chain, like a bit more than for others. So if you see that it's only two, two out of three steps, that's probably what you're waiting for. And it can be up to, you know, 10 minutes. It depends the chain, okay? 10, 15 minutes can also happen on Ethereum, uh, or it can be less, like it really depends. If I'm not wrong, we should be able to see the payload in wormhole scan somewhere. Yeah, so I think if you go to so, the advanced feature, okay. yes, you go down. So here you can see everything and you should. Oh, okay, here's the payload. So usually the last bits are the message. Mm -hmm. So this should be hexadecimal, right, Pauline? Yeah. So, okay, so let's do hex to text converter. Hi, right. hey, so look at this. So I got my signature. Yeah, that works. All right. so, so we are now on Sepolia testnet. <laughs> so you... I mean, this was a very seamless experience. Like, you know, it was very smooth. Like sending a cross-chain message, it sounds like a big thing, but Wormhole just makes it so much easier. 
Yeah, and it's like um, I mean, it's really you you can you get everything in the repo, right? So you you also have to. I mean, here it was just a string, right? We sent, but you can send whatever you want, and and actually, wormhole has many different uh, products, and and they are we we have like CLI for NTT, we have uh, Connect. You can really, I think the U, the the DevX is is pretty good, and the UX is also very awesome. So yeah, I think it's uh, when you start with multi-chain development you think it's going to be so complicated but uh there are some easy way definitely yeah there are there are some easy ways thanks to tools and uh, protocols like wormhole yeah so yeah. thank you so much pauline for teaching oh, us pleasure. how wormhole works and helping me go through and understand the code or the sample app and uh, understand that how we can send message from one chain to another let us know in the comment section if you'd like to see how you can create like different kinds of app using wormhole protocol and footnote. Thank you everyone for watching until now and uh, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.